What you're looking at right now is known as perfection salad, a dish that, if you were to ask most people today, is not considered perfection nor salad. In fact, it's probably better known as the fastest way to get yourself banned from a potluck. But there was once a time when encasing seemingly random foods inside gelatin was all the rage. Something considered trendy and refined rather than the culinary crime we know it as today. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Historodame, and today we're discussing the history of gelatin salads. Gelatin has actually been around longer than you might think, and traces all the way back to medieval Europe. During this period, gelatin was a food of the elite, presented as an elaborate centerpiece on the tables of nobility. Since it was so labor intensive to make, gelatin became a symbol of wealth, since only the wealthy would employ enough servants in the kitchen to spare all that time and energy. It was also practical for preserving meats from bacteria, and pressing into all kinds of shaped molds in order to create visual spectacle at a banquet. This made gelatin dishes a great option when you wanted to flex on all your party guests. Monarchs, like the famous wife murderer King Henry VIII, enjoyed various dishes made from gelatin, such as these squares containing rose-flavored milk jelly decorated with gold, once again proving the fact that just because you have money doesn't mean you have good taste. Gelatin remained a food of the upper class all the way to the 19th century, and Europeans traveling to the North American colonies brought these attitudes with them. When the Industrial Revolution sparked wide changes for the economy, factory production was at an all-time high, and processed food was thriving. But in 1899, when the Genesee Pure Food Company purchased the brand known as Jell-O from a cough syrup maker, things were about to change for gelatin in a very big way. With Jell-O, gelatin dishes could now be made in a fraction of the time, finally popularizing the food with the middle class. By 1902, Jell-O was practically flying off the shelves. In 1905, Miss John Cook of Newcastle, Pennsylvania entered a cooking contest with a dish of her own invention, the titular Perfection Salad, a gelatin mold filled with cabbage, celery, and red pepper. According to the 1972 book American Cookery by James Beard, Miss Cook's victory in the competition had, quote, unleashed a demand for congealed salads that had grown alarmingly, particularly in the suburbs. The excitement did die down, however, during World War I, when sugar was rationed heavily, thus limiting the production of jello. But as soon as the 20s came rolling around, it was back and bigger than ever. During the Depression era, when most people were struggling financially, eating jello was just smart. Gelatin was a great alternative to meat products, providing quick and easy protein, and allowing a family to stretch their leftovers by encasing them in the substance. This meant that a housewife could simultaneously save money and still cook a debatably delicious meal for her family. A gelatin salad, unlike a traditional one, was also neat and mess-free, also providing some visual interest to the dinner table. During World War II, rationing was reinstated, but this time, instead of the trend dying out, gelatin salads became a way to show off to your dinner guests that you could still provide lavish entertainment, despite the shortages and rationing. Jell-O continued to be a go-to choice during the war era. It already had sugar included in the packet, so families didn't need to worry about using up their precious sugar rations in order to cook with it. Jell-O desserts, in particular, gained a reputation for being a dainty and refined food for women, being both pretty and mess-free. What's for dessert? Hello, with things the milkman brings. Jell-O with milk, for baby's brunch. Jell-O with cream, for a light, bright lunch. Jell-O in a tall parfait, with a whip. Jello with ice cream. Hey, you'll flip. Another fine product of General Foods. By the time the war ended, companies had gotten used to producing large amounts of instant and processed foods for the army, and had no intention of slowing down production. 
In order to increase demand for their surplus stock, many gelatin companies started marketing their products and subsequent recipes as a way for the busy housewife to save time in the kitchen. That way, they could focus their attention on more important things, like their children, housework, and in some cases, getting into the workforce. No longer would they slave away for hours in the kitchen. Now they could cook a vaguely unsettling meal in half the time. But things were not as simple as food companies hoped they would be. The social attitude of the time was that a woman who used instant products was lazy and a bad wife. In order to avoid this stigma, many housewives actually began to add extra work back into the process, dressing up their gelatin-encased nightmares and giving their meals a dramatic presentation. Many of the strangest gelatin-based recipes emerged during this period, partially because companies wanted to push their products into every meal of the day, and partially because the modern housewife was determined to find increasingly interesting and terrible ways to prepare these dishes. Many different shaped molds were available, allowing women to create things like a tuna gelatin salad in the shape of a fish. There were also various ways to alter the appearance of these concoctions, such as using different types of gelatin with different densities that would allow ingredients to either float or sink within them, and mixing in things like cream or mayonnaise in order to give it an opaque appearance. Gelatin was showing up everywhere, from dinner to dessert, in your home or at your local barbecue. America was riding high on the gelatin kick, but things couldn't last forever. In the 70s and 80s, a lot more attention was paid to healthy eating, and nutrition campaigns began to push families to eliminate sugar from their diets. Savory Jello products began to fall out of fashion in favor of real salads, and as a result, Jello returned to marketing their product exclusively for snacks and desserts, thus marking an end to the Jello frenzy of the 20th century. Good riddance. Hey everyone, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like or a comment down below. If you want to see more content like this, you can also subscribe to my channel and keep up to date on all the fun history videos of the future. But for now, I bid you farewell.